In this first upload of the year, let me take a second and wish everyone a happy new year. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are, and let's get started. So, the Sony WF-1000XM4. I want to tell you right now, this thing has the best active noise cancellation on any true Wells earbuds, period. Then when you tweak the EQ, it will become some of the best sounding ones too. But it might have some serious comfort issues among other things and I'll tell you all about it in this video. So watch until the very end to know if this is the right pick for you. Let's get started. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and finally, it's been three whole months since the first time I unboxed this. I've been through many ups and downs with Sony's latest and greatest, but yeah, we're going to take a deep dive here, so kick back, relax, and use the chapters if you're in a hurry. As always, full disclosure is down in the description below, which reads, I always give you my own honest opinion. Also, please use the affiliate links to support me at no extra cost to you. With that said, Let's start with one of the most important aspects, the sound quality. Now, first things first, I want to touch on the EQ because honestly, I don't know what they're doing with the default sound. The word that comes to mind to describe it is dark. It's like when listening to Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, a song that should be filled with thundering vocals and guitars is now lacking that energy. When you draw an EQ, it's almost like a downward slope where you will hear prominent bass progressions, the keyboards, the instruments, they're taking the spotlight now instead of the vocals and the guitars. Now, you might say, hey, it might be better for pop or dance songs. Well, I tried listening to Levitating by Dua Lipa, expecting it to do well, but I just can't. The vocals are lacking in clarity, which is why I recommend you to immediately change the EQ into this one I have here. I basically turned down the bass a little bit, or you can keep it, that's up to your preference. But the most important thing is we're boosting the upper mid to treble frequencies here. The result, well, this sounds amazing. It's the closest thing in the entire wireless world to match the Moondrop Aria, which is one of the best IEM under a hundred bucks. That means it basically outperforms any True House earbuds I've ever tested. Let's take this awesome song, Smoking Out of the Window, where you can hear every bass note plucked, the mids are focused in full body, and there's a nice sparkle in the treble, giving extra detail and sense of space without ever sounding harsh. Complete that with a very nice sound staging and separation, like at the intro. You can listen to the guitar echoing around the back left, the acapella on the chorus coming from all around your head while Bruno Mars and Anderson Park always come from the front center. It's a sound that will make you go through your entire library once more just to hear these extra subtleties which I did and I totally loved. But okay, what if you like bass? Well, let's talk about the other EQ I've been experimenting with here. It could be improved, sure, but basically I sort of created a V-shaped tuning, so tons of bass with tons of clarity, and the Sony responds to the change very well. In fact, the extra sub bass oomph is so clean, it's almost addictive. Sometimes I could max out the clear bass lighter, enjoy the heck out of it, and miss it when I come back to my previous EQ. It's that crazy. I could go on talking about how awesome the sound is once you go start tweaking your own and I don't rely too much on the built-in ones because they don't suit my taste but still the point is that drivers here are very versatile you boost bass you get bass you boost treble you get exactly treble it's an excellent performer that from sound quality alone almost makes it worth the price at least in the wireless world. Anyway, if you're finding the video useful so far, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I have a ton of just as amazing but cheaper earbuds coming, so no matter your budget range, there's always a great pick for you in the channel. But yeah, let's get back to the video now and let's move on to the biggest problem in this earbuds, the size. To be specific, the earbuds here are big, like all caps big. And during my first use, I experienced pain points in almost all parts of my ear, even though I used them for like less than an hour. This felt like a huge deal breaker at first, and I was really disappointed as this is my first Sony earbuds that I got to review. But I kept on using them, and after a week or so, for some reason, they just 
don't hurt anymore. Well, there are some occasional times where I put the earbuds in the wrong position and it starts to hurt after two hours or so, but this isn't uncommon as other earbuds like the AirPods Pro or most earbuds actually also gets uncomfortable if I wear it for too long. I think the trick here is to position them well, make sure they don't press any part of your ear too much, and you should be good. For those of you with smaller ears worrying, well, I once gave this to my wife to see if they look hideous, but to my surprise, they look a bit big, yes, but they're fine. Only the ear tips are inside the ear canal and most of the big chunky plastic are outside, barely touching the ear, so it is unlikely to hurt. She even went on and said that this is one of the better fits she ever tried. Maybe thanks to the memory foam tips. Speaking of which, let's talk about the fit. So this is the first earbuds I've seen to only come with foam tips. And I know for some people that could be a huge red flag because sometimes they just hurt, but that comes back to you personally. And just in case you're thinking you can change it to a silicone tip, well, I don't recommend that. I've tried some good third-party ear tips like SpinFit's TP360 or Oslo Setna Celestec, and I found that none of them give passive noise cancellation as good as the default foam tips. This then brings the whole noise cancelling experience down from the best ANC ever to only the ordinary AirPods Pro level, which is still good, but it is a compromise to be made. So my point is, if you want full ANC performance, stick with the default foam tips. But let's start with the good news. These are very well made. It's got that coating that prevents earwax from sticking. You can clean it easily. And because it is memory foam, it gives a very tight fit. But here's the bad news. Compared to the regular silicone tips, you'll feel that your ear is much more stuffed, sometimes to the point where you can feel your own heartbeat. But most importantly, memory foam tips break over time. So far, mine still looks like new, but if you use it a lot and expose it to sweat, expect it to break down quicker, which at one point, you'll probably have to look for a replacement such as this one from Comply. But let's talk about build quality. And I wanna to touch on the unboxing first real quick because I thought when paying top dollar for earbuds like this, I kinda of expected something more. Just bear with me here. This is my first Sony earbuds and I was a bit surprised by the packaging that's very, very simple. It's an eco-friendly one though, so I guess that's okay. Taking a look at the plastics now for the earbuds and the case, it's got a marble-like soft to touch texture, which isn't much of a wow factor at first, but it feels pretty nice. My pre-order comes with a silicone case that's very tight, which is good because it doesn't accidentally slip off like my cheapo AirPods cases. In fact, it feels like I'm going to break the case when I want to take it out. But the good thing is I don't see any debris slipping in so far. The size is pretty compact. It makes good use of space containing this huge earbuds and the lid clicks softly when fully open so it doesn't close by itself. The thing is now you might find a need to charge quite often. I'd say you get about two more full charges and that's it. But charging is easy. Just drop it on a wireless charger or use USB-C, wait for an hour or so and the LED bar in front will turn green, which means it's fully charged. But what's awesome is even if the case is completely depleted, the earbuds will still turn off when you put them back and the case will blink, which means you really, really need to charge them. Now let's talk about the earbuds. These are made with the same soft marble finish. Like I said, there's a touch of gold metal accent on the microphone and generally it's a pretty sturdy build. I've dropped these a lot of times and so far still no scratch or dent that I can see. Now with big size comes big battery and that's the only good thing about this monstrous bulging tumor right here. But I can't complain because with ANC on this could last a good five and a half hours on LDAC or if you use SPC AC that'll go up to six and a half hours. This is finally a usable earbud on LDAC, which is much better than the Edifier Neobuds Pro that barely touches four hours under the same condition. Even though we're talking about quite a significant size difference. As a side note here, I won't talk too much about LDAC, DSE, Extreme, SBC, AAC. Use what you like. Personally, I find these things to give very little to negligible effect and I value the extra battery life more. So I actually recommend using SBC or AAC instead. And if you want more sound quality, then just go wired. Something like the Moondrop Aria already sounds better than this 
for like one third of the price. Anyway, let's move on to the next big aspect. We're gonna talk about the experience, including the app, controls, connectivity, ANC transparency, and finally latency and mic test later. So the app called Headphones Connect is available on iOS and Android. And at first, you'll be greeted with a setup page telling you the basics, as well as setting up stuff like 360 audio, which requires you to take a photo of your own ear. The company made it clear that the picture of your ear will be anonymized, use for research purposes and destroyed after 30 days. Honestly speaking, I don't think it's worth the hassle. It's only available on select songs, on Deezer, Tidal, stuff like that. But in case you wanna use it, it's your call. Now let's start talking about the customization. And first is perhaps a big feature called adaptive sound control. It learns the actions or places you frequent, provided that you allow the app to access your location at all times. So for example, full transparency will engage when you're running and it will automatically switch to noise cancellation while you're on transport. This could be a good feature if you have a set routine of transit in your life, but for me who mostly work from home, it just messes up with whatever I do, so I keep it turned off. Next, let's talk about the ANC. And like I said, this is hands down the best ANC you'll get from a true wireless earbuds, period. Most of the improvements are actually thanks to the memory foam tips because it seals your ear canal much more tightly, which then blocks considerably more mid to high frequency noises. And as you'd expect from a flagship product, there's no sound change, no hissing, no edit pressure, which I know is something a lot will appreciate. Now, there's an option to turn on auto wind noise reduction, which uses more battery, so it's off by default. But if you're someone who walks through a windy street a lot or you wear them while riding bikes this is going to be very useful as it will automatically reduce the noise cancellation a little bit but completely reject wind noise blowing into the mic this is better than the airpods pro that is still slightly affected by the wind although you get the full ANC performance there now for the ambient sound things actually aren't so good because it still doesn't release pressure and transmit outside noise as natural as the airpods pro Heck, even the one more Confobuds Pro has the slight edge on being more open. But otherwise, it's a solid third place because the pass-through sound is clean, there's no hissing whatsoever, and there's no sound quality change as well. Keep in mind that I'm talking about the ambient mode put on max here, but you can set it anywhere in between. And there's an option to focus just on vocals, which doesn't let in the low hums. And don't forget, you can set different settings depending on your location or activity. But again, personally, I like to keep it simple. Either I can hear everything or I cannot hear anything. That's the way I do it. Okay, let's talk about some of the other features left here. Starting with speak to chat. This is amazing. If you're usually on commute and you suddenly meet someone, you can just talk the music will pause, the ambient mode will turn on, and then you can, you know, just start talking. When you're done, after a period of time, like 15, 30 seconds, you can just set it, it will go back to noise cancellation and play your music back. I imagine this would be very useful when someone suddenly comes to you in the office as well, so that's great. But as you can see, I turn it off again because I don't do any of these. I talk with my wife basically all the time, and as a result, if I turn it on, my music will not even play at all, so yeah. Moving on to the next features. There's an option to set connection priorities. Generally, I recommend putting priority on sound, but if you experience stuttering in your place, this stability option is here and it may help with that. And speaking of which, to put this to pairing mode, you just hold them for like five seconds and you can switch devices just by tapping on a paired name on whatever device you want it to switch to. There's no need to turn off Bluetooth on your currently connected device. And this is just like the Galaxy Bud series, which is amazing. It can just, you know, switch almost seamlessly. All the multi-point would have been perfect, but probably they keep it this way to preserve battery life. Okay, let's talk about the controls now. There are three sets of controls you can assign to each side. Ambient sound control, playback control, or volume control. This means if you want to have control on both playback and volume control, you will lose the ability to toggle ANC transparency. Also, when you only use one side, you're stuck with the controls on that side. For example, if I only use my left earbud, which is set to control ambient sound, I cannot play or pause my music. Having said that, the touch area and sensitivity are perfect. Every tap is followed by an instant beep. 
If it doesn't detect that you're wearing it, then it doesn't work. And controls are responsive no matter if you pair it to Android or iOS. Also, you can turn off notification and voice guide so you don't have to listen to ambient mode every time you tap to change it. This gets straight down to business the change is quick and I love it. But just as a heads up, I'm currently testing and loving the Soundcore Liberty 3 Pro because hands down, they are the best when it comes to controls customization. So subscribe to see the review and let's continue with the last laundry list of features. There's ambient sound control operation setting. This thing lets you select the rotation of your ANC toggle. You can add ANC off there to save battery, for example. And there's a setting to help you find the right fit. Also, by default, the wear detection pauses music when you take one earbud out, resumes when you put them back in, and the earbuds have gotten a couple of firmware updates over the months. Nothing much, changes just regular stability updates. But it's nice to see bigger brands such as Sony and Samsung commit to updating their earbuds like this. Last but not least, you don't have to create an account to use all these features, but if you want to save the settings and have it ready the next time you change your phone, you can create an account. This will also unlock the activity tab, which tracks your usage, give you badges, whatever. So there are only a couple of things left to talk about. You'll see the latency tests by yourself, but honestly, I am a bit let down by the microphone quality here. It is affected by loud ambient noises very easily. And I've taken a sample, you know, a couple times just to confirm that this is in fact the correct behavior, which means there are many other earbuds that fare better in my mic test comparison video. With that said, let's check out the test right now. It's also quite relaxed and it lingers on just a bit, which can be nice, but it can also get in the way when it gets louder or you're listening to more complicated pieces. Now, overall, the sound is acceptable for a low priced earbud. The weakest part of the sound on these earbuds. All right, so welcome everyone to the microphone test. Right now, you're listening through the Sony WF1000 XM4, and this is an indoor setting where there's nothing going on. Uh, the room is completely silent. I'm actually just sitting in so far in my living room so yeah what do you think of the sound quality this is the best case scenario that you will get when you do voice calls video meetings and stuff like that but otherwise let's go outside and we'll see how this performs with the outside noise okay welcome to the outdoor test of the sony xm4s everyone what do you think of the sound quality uh, we have a lot of cars and very very noisy motorcycles now. By the way, this is a very strong wind coming. I mean, can you hear me? But can you hear the wind just blowing onto the microphones or whatnot? Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let's uh, compare this to the AirPods Pro as the benchmark of this test right now. All right, so now we are on the AirPods Pro, and what do you think of the sound quality? You still have the same exact situation. Very strong wind coming at my face here, and I know the AirPods Pro are not that good in this kind of windy situation. And also very, very noisy motorcycle. So what do you think of the sound quality? Let me know down in the comments below and let's get back up here. Well, thanks for being here. Let's answer the question of this video. Should you really buy the Sony WF-1000 XM4? 
honestly, if you ask me in my first month of usage, I would tell you no, definitely no. It was awfully big. It was uncomfortable. They lack volume controls and the sound, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how to best tweak it. But as time goes by, I find myself loving these Sonys for their good and bad. It barely hurts anymore, which is a big, big factor in creating this situation right now. And I got it to sound very, very good. And I'm sure there'll be good discounts going on this year and onwards. So just make sure you have a good return policy in case it hurts. Otherwise, this is one of the best earbuds the wireless world has to offer. So leave a comment down below if you have more questions we could talk over on Instagram and Twitter. I'll try to reply as much as I can. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up, use the links if you want to buy it. And thank you so much. I'm Kenneth and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.